family portrait run. If we could get Lisa into the picture here this morning, dress it up a little bit, huh? She did better than I did. <laughs> It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. And our conversation with Ron Moreau, the newest of our Indiana County First Responders of the Month, brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. I teased uh, Ron when he came into the studio that uh, it must be upsetting when he doesn't get a call from Josh Whittison at 3.30 or 4 o'clock every morning. But you get enough of those, don't you? I do. And when I usually, this morning when he sent me one, I'm like, geez, did I miss a call last night? <laughs> you know, what happened yesterday that he needs for the news cycle? So, well, I yeah, bet you. it was a reminder for today, so that was good. <laughs> I, be, I, I would bet that, um, you know, that's a part of the mindset all the time. You're never fully off the job, are you? I, well, I'm off in other ways. But, no, the, <laughs> it's a 24-7, uh, 365 uh, commitment. Um, and guys give what they can give. Um, yeah. uh, but as an assistant chief this year, I – tend to turn that turn that clock up a little bit so that I'm aware of what's going on and making sure guys are going and that we're covered and get trucks out the door, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Your story with the Indiana Fire Association is not all that different from a lot of first responders uh, in That's that uh, there's, there's a lot of family history uh, with the IFA for you, isn't there? There is, and uh, we were just talking about this in the hall. Um, when we got the financing for the building at 5th and Philly, the lender needed the uh, charter from the fire association. Mm. So Bill Simmons and I were looking over the charter, and I'm like, Fred Selig, Fred Selig, look at that name rings a bell. And he was my great-great-grandfather. Wow. And then his son, Fred, was a member. And then we had Don and Ken and Johnny Moreau. And then Ted and Tom, my brother, he retired with 35 years, as did Ted. And now Ted's son, Mike. So there's five generations. It's pretty um, cool. It, it is. I bet you the stories are too. Those are pretty cool stories. <laughs> yeah, we've we've spent some long nights at the station. Uh, <laughs> the guys sitting around just laughing about stories and uh, you know remember this, remember that. Mm. Uh, that's that's what makes the uh, the whole thing worth it. The 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 family we have within the fire service. Yeah. Not only here with Indiana, but all the other departments. You know, it's it's the same, and and we all share those same stories. Yeah, we've had uh, Bill Simmons, Chuck Kelly, all kinds of folks from Indiana Fire Association come and visit us yeah. uh, in the studio over the years, and and that's true. Uh, you know, it really is. Uh, it's a family atmosphere. It's a whole second family. You know, I'm pushing 59, but uh, we've put a lot, and I don't want to do this anymore, but we put a lot of roofs on homes for each other and move safes and pianos, all those crazy <laughs> things, you know. And uh, with that comes 10 more stories, so it's... Uh, it is a big family. You could pick up the phone at any time and get 15 guys to help you uh, yeah. for a 20-minute ordeal. So it's that's the awesome side of uh, volunteering and being part of this group. Well, one of the great things about it is that uh, volunteering is what it's all about when that call does come at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning because you know that you have a solid group that uh, is going to be there for you. Yeah, you know, we're fortunate. Um, the training... Oh, boy, the hours and hours and hours of training over 35 years. Uh, mm -hmm. Not as much now as previous when I was younger, but um, it just, uh, you find it when you need it in that situation. We did it this way this time, or we learned how to do it this way. You know, we've had some opportunities to do some national, nationwide training out in Indianapolis. Amazing training out there. Uh -huh. um, our local stuff is awesome as well, don't get me wrong, but just a whole nother level, and it's, it's really something. Yeah, I would guess. I would guess. Down through the years, of course, uh, as a member of the Fire Association, you've probably seen it all. You hope you've seen it all. You don't want, you don't want anything else new yeah, coming along. Yeah, that kind of thought process. My, uh, my brain's pretty full with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, a big aspect of that uh, is uh, the idea that you're there to help people. You're there to help friends and neighbors uh, and people you don't even know who simply because they have a need, an emergency has arisen, uh, it, it's wonderful for folks to know that guys like uh, you and uh, everybody else in the fire association, all of the neighboring fire companies, uh, that's what you're all about. Yeah, it's it's a mindset. Uh, it's in your heart and your soul to help people. And, you know, they're having their worst day of their life or that one moment in time that we're there to help them out of it. Um, and then we're on to the next one. So uh, you kind of scrub that one and go on to the next one. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, we were running 600 calls a year. So sometimes you're doing two or three calls a day, and then you won't do any for a couple of days, and then you'll do five calls or a storm will roll in, and you'll do 70 calls. So mm-hmm. uh, it's it's busy, and it that's what keeps it fresh and fun, and um, the excitement of, of helping people is always there. And, and brush fire season, which we're in right now, uh, means you're always on the alert for something like that. But, you know, we think of a brush fire, ah, it's just a brush fire. There's no just a no. When, when that siren rings, is there? In the spring like that, and the, the ground might be wet, but the top of the, the grass is dry, and the wind the wind is always against you, and it'll push it through the woods. It's so labor-intensive. And that is definitely a young man's sport right there, the <laughs> brush fires. It's nice to be in the chief's car saying, well, why don't you go do this, or why don't you go do that? And uh, I can sit there and stay you know, comfortable with my replacement knees and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember at a fire site uh, years and years ago, it was probably 4, 4.30 in the morning, um, going out to the site, and um, there was the chief um, doing exactly what you just described, mm-hmm. sitting there. Uh, and coordinating, and and one might think, oh, that looks like the easy job. That's not easy oh, at all, is it? It was a lot easier doing the the firefighting, to be honest, because now I'm worrying about twenty different guys and mm-hmm. where they're at in the building or the conditions of the building. Um, just trying to keep everybody safe, you know, mm-hmm. get the homeowner or whomever the vehicle accident, whoever, um, out of harm's way, and then getting our guys home safely. Yeah, that's that's the big yeah. thing. There's something else you mentioned uh, a couple of moments ago that I found. Uh, a uh, pretty important aspect of being a volunteer firefighter or any sort of emergency mm-hmm. responder, and that is that there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of tragedy yeah. that you see, and uh, the ability to handle that, put it in its specific place, and move on to the next thing. you got to be at the top, right, for, right, for everything. Yeah. yeah, I suppose you compartmentalize some of that. Um, but, you know, anywhere you drive around Indiana, oh, I remember this, and I remember that. And yeah. This happened here, and that happened there, and... You know, we we all talk through it after each nasty call, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are folks that will come and help talk us all through that. You know, that yeah. that mental part of it. Uh, so yeah, you do see some some sad things. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but then you've got the a dozen of good calls. You know, mm-hmm. so um, it balances out for you uh, as, as as somebody who's a family man uh, and and somebody whose family has been very, very much involved in Indiana firefighting for generations. Yeah. Um, why do you do it? I, I don't know. I ask myself that every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess um, I guess it's part of my upbringing. My dad was Civic Leader of the Year. My mom was an Athena Award winner. Uh, my wife and I always were helping at the United Way when my dad was a director. Anything that came up, you were involved. My parents were involved. My brother's done the same. And my sister, she doesn't live here, but... We've all just kind of been active in the community, and um, I don't really have a reason. I just, yeah. it is what it is, I guess, what, and what, happy to do it. Was little Ronnie running around the firehouse when you were a kid? You know, not so much. Um, I guess he did. Uh, I just looked at my wife here. Uh, he's Little Ronnie's now 35. <laughs> <laughs> what about you when you were little Ronnie? Actually, no, because my dad was not a member. Uh, so uh, I got involved probably because of my brother. Uh, uh-huh. He was a member and active, and... Um, you know, bolting out of Thanksgiving dinners and uh, returning just wiped out, you know. And yeah. uh, when I got out of college, I, I decided I'd want to join up. And, you know, that was in 80. Geez, I got out of college in 88, So, but I joined in 89 because back then there was a waiting list. So, uh, you know, you can only have so many people in your charter. So Think Happy back. Mm-hmm. Think back uh, about all of the fires. You know, we think about um, the one last, last Christmas uh, in, in Arma out there in Mm -hmm. Sweetfield Township. We think of uh, the one up the road there at Kreps a few years ago. What are those ones that are always going to be there for you that you're going to think back? This was the biggest one. This was the one that stands out most to me. Kreps was huge because it was a 24-hour ordeal. I mean, when I got there at 8-something in the morning that day, and I left the next morning at 8, you know, we started to rotate people through, and we had Mm -hmm. help from everywhere, and it was such a massive undertaking. Um, I remember about three in the morning, contractors had come in with backhoes and uh, forklifts and to move the paper and to move all the roll, oh, the yeah. great big, those things were huge. And uh, it was just like a well-coordinated effort. Mm-hmm. This guy was moving this, this guy was backing in. 
pulling this stuff out. And I just sat there, and I have that picture in my head. It was I was just in awe at how everybody worked together, common goal, common mission. Yeah. Uh, I do remember one one roll of paper. When I'm talking a roll, these are tons of. I mean, the huge fill up this room. Yes, it got loose and it rolled over the hose, over everything. Went down and smashed into the front of our engine. <laughs> And I'm thank God nobody said let's stop it because it'll bowl them right over. But yeah. uh, I'll never forget that either. Fortunately, wow. it just put a little dent in the bumper, and uh, it was kind of a sign that says, you know, <laughs> everybody keep your head, you know, head up and be aware yeah. of what's going on. Yeah, those major fires or something. I yeah, think, I think of the one in in Homer City. What was it? that? Was the Accent one? Accent Fuels. Yeah, yeah, that was a big fire. I was not at that one, but the pictures were amazing, and I listened yeah. to it that night. And uh, just getting water to the scene and. Um, just how things kind of double and triple in size fairly quickly as you're getting set up. Yeah, especially um, when there are fuels involved and oh yeah, things. You What's know, in the building? Flammables are yeah, it's huge. Yeah, uh, and then you worry about your exposures and you know you you know you want to keep it to the building that's burning and mm-hmm. you know in some of our in Indiana Borough, I mean the homes are pretty close to each other, so try and mitigate that spread if you can. I'm going to ask Mark Burdig to come over and present to you this plaque as our first responder of the month, Ron Moreau of the Indiana Thanks, Fire Mark. Association. Congratulations, Ron. Thank you. Uh, great stories. I know your family, fabulous legacy you know, through the years. And uh, I know you've helped us out on uh, ah. – we, we're sorry for a couple of those false alarms, too. <laughs> it's part so, of the business, I guess. Yeah, but uh, 35 years, incredible. Um, so you made it past your brother, right? He, he retired. No, actually, I have 35 in the fall. Okay. And he, I think he finished up right at 35, so I'm going to go at least 35 in one day. <laughs> okay, there you yeah, yeah, You have to do that. And, you know, your, your wife is here, too, and I, I can't help but think of all uh, the uh, family members, spouses, et cetera, with Absolutely. all of the emergency responders and the sacrifices that they make while you're making your own uh, sacrifices. So uh, we, we applaud you on behalf of Renda Media and Rosebud Mining. First Responder of the Month presented to Ron Moreau of the Indiana Fire Association. Ron, well done, and we hope it goes well beyond 35. Oh, I I tend to stay for a bit. Okay, congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. Ron, thank you so much for coming to visit with us today and uh, to you and your compatriots with the Indiana Fire Association. Our good family. Our undying thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. Ron Moreau, our Indiana County First Responder of the Month. He's the First Responder of the Month for March. We actually fell behind a little bit, but uh, we're glad we were able to get that done. And we want to thank Rosebud Mining uh, for making it all possible. They're such a good group of folks, and they want you to recognize as well that we have guys like Ron and and gals like uh, Ron and everybody else in the Indiana Fire Association all over this county who are there for others in their time of need. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS. 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Fox News is next at 9 o'clock, and then Josh in our WCCS newsroom. 101.1 FM and AM 1160, WCCS, Homer City, Climber. WCCS. President Biden's warning on weapons. I'm Chris Foster of Fox News. He says shipments of large bombs to Israel will stop if a large-scale military operation is launched in a city where more than a million Palestinians are taking shelter. President Biden is withholding certain offensive weapons so that Israel cannot use them to stage a ground assault on the city of Rafah in southern Gaza. The president telling CNN... Civilians have been killed in Gaza as a consequence of those bombs and other ways in which they go after population centers. The Biden administration has been pressuring Israel not to move into Rafah. The president says the U.S. will continue to supply Israel with defensive weapons. In Washington, Jack Callahan, Fox News. The Biden administration is expected to announce new rules for asylum-seeking migrants. It could possibly speed up deportations when apply to those migrants seeking asylum, essentially allowing denials at the initial screening stage as opposed to the interview stage of the asylum process, and this would impact national security rules. Fox's Mark Meredith at the White House. Former adult film star Stormy Daniels is expected back on the stand this morning at former President Trump's criminal hush money trial. She testified about meeting the former president at that celebrity golf tournament in Lake Tahoe in 2006, then going to a suite for dinner and then having sex. 
prosecutors calling her to prove that Trump had a motive a decade later in 2016 to silence her when he ran for president. The DA's case rests on that allegation that Trump paid her off through Michael Cohen to hide her story. So voters will not find out about that alleged alliance that the former president denies. The defense is trying to undermine Stormy's credibility and cast her as an extortionist who once, remember, denied the affair. That's Fox's Eric Sean outside the courthouse in New York City. Weekless job, uh, weekly jobless claims have jumped to two.